am Nicole and in this video I'll be sharing with you how I am able to realign the blade, the fence and also change the cutting stick on my 17 inch HFS paper cutter. Um, someone asked me on my video recently how to realign the blade so I decided I would share with you how I do all three of them and I will make sure to put stamps in the video so that you can jump around to the section that might be applicable to you. Now this will also apply to the 12 inch version as well. So these are the tools that you would need. Two size eight box wrenches, a size 14 socket and wrench, and also a size 10. It may also be handy to have a size 18 nearby. Alternatively, you can use all box wrenches. You will need two size eight, a size 10, a size 14 and again it will be handy to have an 18 close by optional will be to have an adjustable wrench in case you're using all box wrenches and you run into any issues an adjustable wrench will help and also a piece of cloth because there is quite a bit of grease when you open up the machine all right so in this section of the video i'm just going to demonstrate what the the aligned, what an aligned blade and fence should look like if everything is lined up properly. So if you engage your blade, your blade should cut into your red cutting and stick where the top part of the blade closest to the hinge where the stick is should actually be cutting into the stick and the lower end of the blade closer to the end of your machine should have enough space where a piece of just printing paper, 20 pound printing paper folded in half should be able to go through probably not being able to pass you know like this fourth screw all right now if it is i if it is you check out the website it says that this space can be as wide as one to two millimeter if i use some a pair of calipers my spacing is actually under one millimeter but that works for me so just know that this spacing could be a, according to the website as wide as one to two millimeter um, away from the cutting stick. Now for the fence, if I was to disengage the blade and put the fence down. All right, so you should see that there is little to no space between the fence and the base of the machine and any imperfections like up on this side here um, well, at least on my machine, that is due to whatever imperfection in the welding itself, but it does not create any issues when I am cutting books. So I just wanted to show you what it should look like if everything is lined up properly. All right, so as I get the machine ready to start working on showing how you can realign the blade, I just want to mention that this process does take a bit of patience. Um, I have done this before and if I can find the clip, I will insert the clip showing my other frustration um, with trying to do this the first time. Ah, okay. Come on, you could do it. Um, secondly, I just want to mention that of course my machine is aligned right now. So I will first have to take it out of alignment, show you what that looks like and then realign it for you know, for demonstration so that you will be able to align yours. All right, so the first step is removing the hood screws and there are four of them, two at the top, and then there are two additional ones at the, um, the base of the machine when you flip it over. And this machine is pretty heavy, so please be careful. Um, and when you take off those four hood screws, you would be able to remove this, this face plate, which will allow you to get to the respective bowls that will enable you to adjust both the blade and the fence of the machine. All right, so these are the thumb screws at the base of the machine. And my second one is different from the one that originally came with the machine. The website does mention that when you first get your machine, check to see if there are any missing parts. However, by the time I noticed that, it was long past the time I would have been able to contact the company. So my husband, he took this thumb screw to my local hardware and he was able to thread it into a device that they have there and we were able to replace it with this size thumb screw. 
now this doesn't come with the nut part this part here so the nut from this phillips screw we use that with this flat head thumb screw and that is how we were able to replace this because if you just use this thumb screw by itself this flathead part it does not give you enough tightness but putting the nut on there enables you to get um, a closer grip all right so now we are able to remove this face plate enabling us to see the different bolts and screws that we will be adjusting to be able to align both our fence and our blade so to adjust the blade you first need to disengage it by lifting the blade up once you do that you're going to use your size 14 socket and wrench or your box wrench if that's what you'll be using and you will loosen this bottom and this top knot loosening these will then allow you to take your size eight millimeter box wrench and loosen this nut when you loosen this nut both both this nut and the screw will turn in an anti-clockwise -clock direction once these two are loose with the blade disengaged right you then have to go through a process of adjusting or readjusting this small nut on this vertical screw and continuously testing testing to see where your blade is by engaging and disengaging it where this nut is attached to the screw and the depth of the screw into this metal plate that combination is what determines the angle of the blade once you have gotten your blade to a position that works for you you want to keep it engaged by keeping this handle down tighten this small nut onto the screw then retighten these two nuts if when retightening all of this you forgot to engage the blade and you left it up when you retighten everything there is a possibility that it will still be out of alignment hopefully that makes sense all right so during this process i will not be loosening this middle nut and bolt there is a case where you may need to loosen this and i'll share that after i go through this entire process and i'll also try to explain a little better what direction this nut is turning in and what direction you have to turn the screw to get it to go this vertical screw to have it go higher up or lower down the cutter can become as misaligned as seen in this clip however i will not be taking it out of alignment this much for this demonstration i only want to share how to realign it however please note that the same procedure applies even if yours is this much out of alignment all right, so currently my machine is aligned and this is as far as my paper can stick through the space between the bed of the machine and the blade with my knife engaged. So I'm going to remove this paper, disengage my knife and start to loosen my, my um, various nuts. So I'm going to use my size 14 and loosen this just a little bit. And then I am going to loosen my my small knot to the top by turning it in that direction in an anti-clockwise direction when I turn that knot anti-clockwise it also turns that top screw in the same direction now sometimes using your hands in this process might actually make it a little bit faster now if i engage my knife it should still be aligned because i did not adjust my screw or anything i just loosened everything so it should still be aligned all right so now i'm going to take it out of alignment by disengaging that 
and I am going to send this vertical screw a little bit lower down. This is where your second um, box wrench comes in handy because it allows you to hold whether it's the, the nut or the screw so that you can turn them in opposite direction. Direction, sorry. So to send the screw downwards, I need to turn it in a clockwise direction. I have had my machine aligned one time where this screw was lowered down into this metal plate and another time when it was higher up touching the top of the machine. So it really is just a matter of testing to see where it lines up. I think because it has moving parts, this plate can shift so that variation can occur as to where the bolt, the arm, um, the nut and the screw has to be um, tightened for you to get that alignment. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so now I'm going to re-tighten this and see if I got it to get out of alignment. It's a pretty tight space to be working in, so it just calls for just a little bit of patience. Okay, so now my screw is a little bit lower. Let's see how that looks now. And I can already see that the space is now much wider. All right? Okay, so if I disengage this and I loosen my bolt, my nut, sorry, turning it in an anti-clockwise direction, And I'm going to hold it in place and I'm going to try sending my screw up a little bit higher by turning it in, continuing to turn it in that anti-clockwise direction. Then I'm going to hold that screw in place, so hold it up there and then I'm going to re-tighten this lower Let me have to test it a couple of times. Right, let's see. And it's still out of alignment. So I have to loosen this back up. And with it a little bit loose, I'm going to test it. It's still out of alignment. So you really just have to have just a teeny bit of patience with this process. Turn my screw up just a little bit more. Bring the bowl down just a little bit. Tighten it just a little bit, not all the way. Test it again. as you can see there is a little bit of trial and error to this but once once you loosen these nuts and you keep readjusting that top nut onto that screw and testing where your blade is at continuously eventually it will get realigned so I'm loosening this nut again Now I'm going to bring my screw, try bringing my screw down by turning it in a clockwise direction, holding the screw in place, loosening my bolts a little bit more, 
see where it's at. Well, that looks good. Perfect. See where it's at? It's right there. It's fine. Yep. That's about perfect. So I'm going to leave that engaged right there. And I'm now going to tighten this smaller knot onto this vertical screw. So there is a bit of trial and error to it. So tight. So I wanna I do want to tighten it tight enough where with the continuous um engaging and disengaging of your knife when you are using it, it doesn't become loose too quickly and the same thing with these two um these two nuts not too tight where it's going to damage the thread though so i'm going to turn it on to tighten it all right so if i lift this up and i re-engage it and I put my paper through. Right. My knife is, yeah. So let me show it to you from the other side. Right. So looking from the other side, you can see just a peak of light at the base of the blade. But if I was to go higher up closer to the hinge, you would see that the blade is actually cutting in to my cutting stick. Um, according to the company website, as I re um, mentioned, sorry, early on in the video, this spacing can be as big as one to two millimeter, but I'm going to leave mine with this smaller spacing since this has been working well for me. All right. So before I mentioned this size 18, according to the company's website, if readjusting this knot on this screw after you loosen these two bolts does not help to realign your blade then you may loosen this nut and bolt which will allow this metal um, plate here to be able to move up it doesn't have much room at the bottom but it can go higher up of course sending the screw the screw deeper into the plate which might give you that extra maneuver to adjust your blade hopefully that makes sense so this size 18 is going to enable you to, to loosen this. Now, I have never had to adjust that, but that's what this is going to work for. Also, if you don't find that the tension in your knife is, ten, is um, tight enough, this is also going to fit on this knot and bolt. And there is another one over here, right? That, well, right. So it fits on that one. Now, if it's up here, then you'll have to use a box wrench because this kind of fit there but that is what the size 18 is going to be used for if by chance you need it all right so thankfully we've done the hardest part adjusting the fence and the um cutting stick is much easier so this is where your 10 millimeter socket is going to come in to play and that is going to loosen this bolt and this bolt I'm going to turn it off. Just a couple of turns. All right. And now you see you have some wiggle room in your fence. Now you want to make sure that your blade is up and out of the way when you're working with that. Now to make sure that your fence is flat towards the base of the machine, you want to turn your turning wheel all the way down and you want to use your hand and sort of make sure that it's pushed all the way towards the base of the machine and then tighten your bolts so you want to tighten these enough otherwise when you make your first cut it is actually going to become unleveled again i've had that happen to me before so you want to give it a good little push make sure it's tight enough on there but not too tight to destroy 
the thread of the bolts. And as you can see, there's little to no spacing left there. Any space is due to whatever imperfections in the welding of the machine. I'm just going to engage it and make sure everything looks good. So I'm just going to engage it one last time and just make sure everything looks good. And that looks good. All right. So that takes care of that defense and also the blade. So I'm going to go ahead and reattach my face plate one time because you do not need the face plate to be off in order to be able to rotate the cutting stick. When you are raising up the machine, you might want to make sure that you have your blade engaged just so that you don't make a mistake and put your fingers under that blade when you are going to reattach your thumb screws because that knife is extremely sharp. And you can just take your hands and push the the um the plate of the the face of the machine inwards so that the holes will line up. All right. So to rotate the cutting stick, I need my machine to be upwards, and I will be using my ten millimeter box wrench. It will you will not be able to get the socket to fit in there. <laughs> If you feel safer with this leaning up against the wall, you probably do that. So now I'm going to disengage my blade. And as soon as I do that, my stick is already falling out. So I'm going to just put this down so that you can see. And now I can just pop this out of here. Be careful because you're close to the blade. So I'm just going to put a mark because I don't want to rotate mine. And this now, if you look here, you can see this groove. And this is where your blade cuts into the stick. I rotated mine once, well, actually three times. So one, two, and now it's on this rotation. Okay, so you get to use this eight times. One, two three four and then you flip the the arm um, the stick and now you get um four more cuts on the opposite side does that make sense all right so now it should have had a cut on this side so now you'll be able to rotate it and get it four more turns so i'm going to flip mine back this way and put it back how it was since i don't need to change mine as yet and that is how you rotate the cutting stick. Just drop that in there. Engage the blade to keep it in place. Raise it up. Tighten those bolts. And you're all done. Alright, so before we wrap it up, we're just going to test our work. Alright, I'm going to replace my fence to protect my little fingers. Put it into this notch first and then down into that cylindrical area and now if this is your first cut on your stick you want to make sure and engage the blade cut into the stick so you can see where your spine needs to cross otherwise you won't be cutting into anything so i want to get it past there just about there align my fence push my fence up and tighten it as tight as possible make sure that my spine is crossing that line now the trick to getting your spine to cut as straight as possible 
make sure your knife is straight up um safe <laughs> safety first then take your fingers and push the spine and the entire book towards this fence to straighten it oops not that much and then hold it flat and um tighten or send your fence down sometimes i forget the step and my cuts are a little bit slanted not enough to cause an issue but if you're using it more in a professional setting that may not be the results that you are looking for right engage the knife and now it's the true test Here we go. All right. And if you look at that cut, it is not bad at all. It's not bad at all. And this is the ending result. All right, guys, so I hope that was helpful. If it is the video helped you, consider giving it a like below so that it can get out to other people. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them below and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. And I'll talk to you in another one. Bye.